Let's begin by defining the sky and kind of breaking it down so that we can get used to some terminology and directions. So here we are standing in an open field. We have north more or less behind us and south in front of us. I guess you could say we're facing toward the southwest, if you like. The horizon is just a perfect 360 degree circle and the sky is suspended both above and below us. And the reason why I've drawn it below as well is because we know from our experience that there are stars and planets that have yet to rise. They'll rise later this afternoon and this evening. So we're going to go ahead and just represent the entire sky, even though we can't see it all. Now, the position that's directly above our heads is called the zenith, and the point directly beneath our feet, we call that the nadir. And if we take a circle and draw it from due north through the zenith to due south and back around again, then we can define a circle that will divide the sky into eastern and western halves. This is called the meridian. And this is going to be a useful reference point going forward. Now, while we're here, I'd like to just describe for you briefly how we can identify the position of any point in the sky from our perspective. So let's just say we have a star and we can describe its position above the horizon. We do that by tracing a line directly to the horizon that's directly underneath our star and drawing an angle up to the star. So this angle is the star's altitude and we define altitude as zero degrees at the horizon and plus 90 degrees at the zenith. So the zenith is directly overhead. You could just draw a 90 degree angle from the horizon to the zenith. By the way, we can also describe the altitudes of objects below the horizon by using negative values. So it's zero degrees at the horizon and minus 90 degrees at the zenith. Now we can also work out where along the horizon we need to look. And to do that, we start at due north and we just trace a clockwise angle until we arrive directly underneath our star on the horizon. And this angle is called the star's azimuth. So azimuth begins at 0 degrees due north, followed by 90 degrees due east, 180 due south, and 270 due west. And for this reason, since it's aligned to the horizon, it's sometimes referred to as the horizon coordinate system, or sometimes alt azimuth, or alt az, uh, just for short. Anyway, if you could lie down, it would look like you're looking up into a giant dome. And that dome would look a little bit like this. This is what we would see if we had fisheye vision, or even if you could just lie down in a field with your head oriented toward the north and your feet toward the south. If you used your peripheral vision, you could kind of build up an image like this in your brain. You can sense out the horizon. So the horizon is the great circle with the grass drawn on it. And anything that is at the horizon has an altitude of zero degrees. The point directly overhead is the zenith, which we can represent like this with the green letter Z. And you can see that this is morning. It's uh, near where I live. And you'll see that the sun is up. And it is it's because it's the morning. The sun is somewhere in the eastern half of the sky. And it is just above the horizon. The bright object uh, to the uh, five o'clock position of the zenith, uh, that is our moon. So the moon is high up, but somewhere in the southwestern sky. So let me go ahead and draw the meridian, this green line arcing from due north, arcing upward through the zenith to due south. And again, this is a little bit tricky, but you just want to remember that you are kind of looking into a dome. So the closer something is to the center of our screen, the higher in the sky or the greater its altitude above the horizon. Okay, well, I don't want to have to make you listen to me talk for 24 hours. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and speed up time. And we're just going to watch the sun make its way throughout the day today. So the sun's getting a little bit higher and it's kind of moving in a southeastern direction, getting closer to the southern horizon. And now you'll notice it's about to do what we call transit the meridian. So this point right here, this would represent our local noon. This is not to be confused with 12 o'clock noon because we use things like time zones and other things to define time. But this is when the sun is at its highest position above the horizon. It is transiting the meridian, so it's at its greatest altitude. And 
I'm saying it's at its highest or highest altitude because as the day continues, the sun now begins to decrease its altitude as it moves toward the southwestern sky, gradually moving toward the due west and setting even just a little bit due north. This simulation is being run in August, so we're getting a good idea of what's going on tonight. Well, the sun sets and the stars come out. And the thing to notice here is that we have the stars doing the exact same thing that the sun appears to do. They rise in the east, they cross over the meridian, they transit the meridian, and then they set toward the west. And the thing is, is that this pattern will repeat itself. So as these stars continue to set very gradually over time, the sun will begin to rise once again. And now it's daytime. So a new day dawns, the pattern repeats. And it's for this reason that many ancient civilizations and indeed certainly many ancient Greek astronomers felt that the stars must be some kind of a vast sphere and not a dome at all. So we have the sphere that is, seems to be rotating around us and with this regular predictive cadence, they assumed that this must mean that the stars are imprinted upon a sphere. Well, even though we know that's not the case at all, it turns out that there's something that's there's something to this idea that's actually still useful to us in modern day astronomy. 